Hey there everyone. So I've been working with six off video on point clouds for a while, and I've come up with a couple of techniques to sort of fill in the gaps between where the points are. So these techniques are split into sort of two categories. One is background plates, and the other is in-painting. So here we are in Unity, and the first technique I'm going to talk about is background plates. So I've just paused the point cloud here for a second, but you can see how I can sort of move around, and everywhere that's occluded by either the telescope or the people or anything that walks in front of anything else, there's just a giant shadow that gets cast in the background where nothing gets drawn, this occlusion shadow. And if I move the camera back here, you can see it's just black. There's no information. So the first technique I'm going to talk about is background plates. And if I go into Photoshop here, you can see what I've done. is basically just removed all of the people and all of the objects that are in the foreground. I used uh, multiple frames from the video from different times so that the people are in different areas and, you know, um, used like the clone tool and that sort of thing. And then I also use content aware fill to like fill in areas that where nothing moved. I obviously didn't spend a lot of time doing this. You could spend a long time and get a very clean background plate, but I just wanted to do this for a test. So this is what I've got. So we go back to Unity now. And we're just looking at the background plate. You can see there's just nobody there. There's no telescope. There's no people walking around. This is just the background. So if I turn the video point cloud back on, you can see there are the people and there's the background. They're both married together. And there's no more of that occlusion shadow that's cast behind the child, behind the telescope, behind any of the people. Again, it's not perfect, but um, it does a pretty good job. I'll turn the plate off here and then back on, and you can really see the difference. You can see how much information is just filled in in those areas. Now I'm going to turn on the mesh plate, and you'll notice that the point cloud plate had a bunch of holes because it was still the point cloud, and this mesh plate does not have those same holes. Um, so this is sort of combined with two techniques of mesh displacement on one hand for the plate and point clouds for the sort of foreground. So I'll go ahead and play now and you can see um, people still disappear as they go into those occlusion shadows because there's no information for them there, but it does fill in that background area, which is what we're going for. So now the other technique I'm going to talk about is in-painting. And in-painting is also known as content-aware fill if you use Photoshop, and it's a technique of just sort of algorithmically filling in uh, empty areas. So originally I thought I was going to be using OpenCV or some other software solution for in-painting, and so I wrote this shader, which just makes the area that has color pixels black and the area that needs to be filled in white. So if I go to the OpenCV in-painting documentation, you can see that's exactly what you need, this white on black image in order to make it work. And I actually did get pretty far into incorporating OpenCV into Unity, but um, it was getting pretty difficult, and so I just wrote up this script real quick to see what sort of uh, results we'd be getting from the OpenCV in painting. And actually, I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, if you look up close, you can see it's not very good. And even if you used more iterations and everything, um, it just it wasn't very good, and it doesn't run in real time. So I figured that wasn't going to work for us. So I started working on my own in-painting algorithms, and I've got some stuff. It's not great, but, um, you know, it's a start. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the first one here. And really, this one just sort of repeats the, um, the pixel that is next to it and sort of smears it out and kind of averages it a little bit. And in that way, we can fill in the holes with similar colors. So I'll move the camera around here a little bit, and you can just sort of see what it's doing. So now here's the second in-painting algorithm, which is a little blockier. I think it's a little better, and it averages out the colors in the area a little bit more. And again, there's no background plate here being used at all. This is all just from the images supplied. Here's a third in-painting algorithm, which is, um, again, sort of averaging and repeating pixels. And they're all sort of variations on, you know, repeating the nearest pixels and then averaging things out and stuff like that. Okay, and here's the fourth in-painting algorithm. Um, again, variation on the same thing. It sort of repeats nearby pixels and then averages stuff out a little bit. Uh, this fourth one, I think, works sort of the best in most situations. So this is kind of the furthest I've gotten so far, but obviously there's still a lot of room for improvement here. 
and you can really see where this stuff could go, especially in the future if you incorporate sort of uh, machine learning and like um, stuff like that. And the other advantage of not using a plate and using algorithmic in painting is that you don't need a plate, so you can use literally any video and you don't have to do any sort of pre-prep. So I'll just load up another video here and you can see how these algorithms do. So let's go ahead and just look at this in VR. Here we are in VR and here again is the black on white with white showing everything that needs to be painted in. And um, so here's our first technique. This is the point cloud plate. You can see that the shadow behind the telescope here is certainly filled in and um, a lot of stuff gets filled in. There's still a lot of black areas though because not everything gets filled in. It's still a point cloud and it only fills in areas where there would be a point cloud. So while the texture matches, um, there's still a lot of missing information. Here's the displaced mesh clean plate with the point cloud on top. And you can see this one fills in everything. There's no more black areas because everything is filled in with the mesh, but there is also a lot more distortion that you get that is inherent with the mesh displacement. But, you know, the occlusion shadows are filled in. Everything's filled in. You'll see there if someone walks behind, uh, they just sort of disappear into the clean plate like those two girls there. But, you know, it does fill in the holes. And here's a uh, point cloud and then the displacement mesh. You can see the difference between the two. Uh, I'll move the camera up here a little bit and we can see if there's the point cloud clean plate and the mesh displacement clean plate. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at in painting. I can just sort of turn the setting up and increase the amount of pixels I'm repeating and, um, you know, fill in the holes that way. Again, running into some video frame rate issues here, but, you know, we'll get through it. Uh, okay, here's the second in-painting algorithm, the blockier one. Um, the performance does seem to be a little bit less on this one, and it was actually even noticeable in the headset. So this one's a little slower. Okay, here's the third option. And it's off, and then back on again. And then I'll blur it out a little bit here. And hopefully our video will start playing again in a second. There it is, off again. Oh, there goes the video. And here it's on. Uh, you can see one of the major things it fills in is it fills in all of the holes in the sky, which is really nice. Okay, and here's the fourth in-painting algorithm. There's off and on. Okay, let's go ahead and look at another video here. This is from Hugo King Fretz, and this is at the Renaissance Fair. And again, there's no clean play or any sort of pre-prep done. This is all done in real time. Here's the first algorithm. This is the line repeating algorithm. Run into some frame rate issues. Okay, so here we are. This is the third algorithm. This is the fourth algorithm. There's off. Okay, last video here. This is um, an Isle of Dogs 360 video that I converted to 6 off using stereo to depth. This is the first algorithm. Uh, there's a you know frame drop issue here, obviously. Here's the second algorithm, this is the third algorithm, and the fourth algorithm. And 
once again, here's the first, second, third, and fourth. So still obviously a lot of room for improvement. I think there are some really smart people out there that can come up with some really interesting algorithms. I want to keep looking into this too. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.